Okay, right, there we are, week 157. So, um, what have I done this week? I have killed a coral frag, let's deal with that first. So, I've slightly changed the way I do my water changes. As you watched last week, I've set up automatic water changes using my large paracelltic pump, which does about 200 litres a week, leaves me 100 litres to clean out my sump, do my uh, little LPS tank down there and get in here and do any detritus, which generally collects here, which is handy because it goes straight down the sink. Um, so normally before I set up the automatic water changes, I did my water change on a Monday. I did the full 300 litres. So I'd do what I did down in the sump room, then I'd come up and do the rest in the main tank and I'll just go right through, siphon everything out. In this top corner I would put the new fresh water in. Now I'm doing automatic water changes I only have about a hundred litres left because throughout the week obviously it just does the 200 and then what I did last week is before <laughs> I did my manual water change so in the sump in the tank downstairs and replace it with the fresh salt water here I, I refilled the barrel so I put 200 litres of water from my IBC outside in here, not really thinking, just filled it up, went right. And then I also hung the hose from the lighting rack. I don't know why, normally, like this, I have the hose on the corner of the tank to fill it. Um, but this time, for some reason, I hung it from the lighting rack, which is right in the middle of the tank, directly over the frag, which is now bleached white. Um, and then obviously I did my water change. So I reckon that water was probably 17 degrees. Um, and I think it's just unfortunate that it was lined up completely over the top of that one freight. So it probably had an hour of getting blasted with 17 degree salt water on it. And it's shown me how much it liked that by now being stone dead. Um, so I'm a bit gutted actually because that frag has been there probably a year and a half, two years, just facing out, doing its thing, growing quite nicely. Um, yeah, so I won't be doing that again. So that's that. So it's funny, isn't it? You, you make little changes like the auto water change and then your normal sequence of events of doing a water change causes you to do something stupid like that and lose a coral. Um, but Anyway, everything else in the tank looks fine. Clams are still going strong. Um, yeah, looks fine. It's good. Uh, what else did I have to do? So this week I made up some more um, dosing. So I made up magnesium, which is running low again. So you have to dose tons of magnesium to get to get it to come up. So it dropped down to I think it's twelve eighty. Um, and I tested it to make sure the trident wasn't just throwing out some spurious results. Um, but it, it came back on the, I think I used Salivate, um, also came around 1280. So I thought, right, so I need to dose it. So I buy uh, magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate, and then I mix them together in a ratio of 130 grams to 92 grams per litre. Um, so I think I made five litres and I'm dosing 300 mil a day and it just come back up. I think I've been doing it for a week. Yeah, about a week. And it's just come above the 1300. I think I'm at 1310, somewhere around there. Uh, so I want to get to that 1350 to 1400, really. So I'd imagine I've got quite, quite a bit of dosing still to do. Um, so I've done that. Last week when I finished um, making the video, I went down to, I'm checking my salt quite frequently at the moment because I've added two extra fans out of the tank and it's been hot last week. Um, so there's been more um, evaporation. So I can subsequently up my calc dosage. <clears throat> so I check that I'm not <clears throat> either dosing too much or not enough um, RO water with the calc by measuring salinity quite frequently. So I've shown you before that I use these 
Topic Marin High Precision Hydrometers. Lovely, I love them to be. It's a great bit of kit. I've got the perfect um, tank down in my sump that I can just, I've got one power ahead in it. I turn it off, it's just my LPS tank. I drop it in and I take a measurement. Unfortunately, last week I dropped it in, I took the measurement, I took it out, it slipped straight from my hand and smashed into a trillion pieces on the uh, concrete floor down there. And then, because uh, at the bottom it's got all those tiny little lead, these are like little tiny lead balls, and it's sealed in with that resin. So that smashed the smithereens, and I had to go and sweep up all of those lead balls. So I bought a new one. So that's that. I'll probably break this one at some point. They are fragile, I want to get very slippery when they're wet, obviously. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So I'm dosing magnesium, broke my hydrometer, killed my coral frag. Um, I've also mixed up some more sodium hydroxide. It's not nice stuff to mix up, but I mixed up a four molar solution. So I put 160 grams in a litre, and I think I made four litres, I think. Um, I have to lock my dog in and I do it outside in the garden. I wear like gloves up to my armpits and a respirator, um, like a full face mask basically, just because I don't want to splash it on anything and it gives off some pretty noxious spoons when you're mixing it up. Um, but I do like it, it is so cheap and so good. So I'm only dosing 60 mils a day at the moment um, and my alk stays around nine between nine nine point three i think it is i think that's where it stays and my ph is 8.1 at a low and about 8.3 8.31 at a high i'm happy with that and that'll do me um so, I think, so what's happening is actually as i'm dosing more calc because of the um, evaporation increase i'm reducing the amount of sodium hydroxide so i'm balancing them out so I'm up to 20 litres of calc a day and I'm at 60 mils of sodium hydroxide a day and I only run my calcium reactor for I think two hours a day really. That's more just to flush it through, make sure everything's working fine really. So it comes on late afternoon, um, at four, goes up at six I think. Still dosing lanthium into the skimmer. Seems to be working fine, it's pulling out some good skimmate. Um, it's not clogging. There is a little bit of residue on the end of the tube, I've noticed, when I clean the skimmer cup. Um, but I'm hoping that it's taking all of that particulate phosphate out. Um, what else? I also sent off a TNC ICP MS test. Um, so that's the mass, mass spectrometry test, which is, I think, two decimal bases better say better but more accurate i don't know how you want to say it um than the normal um oes icp ah uh, when did i send it off i think i sent it i think it was last wednesday wednesday i think it was wednesday of last week today is tuesday tuesday today yeah tuesday yeah, I normally do my maintenance on a Monday. I'm a day out because um, I was doing stuff yesterday. Uh, yeah, Tuesday, and it's it gets sent to the States. So I quite, I quite like the idea. So that you get the box of the two vials. I did like the full one. I think it does 50, tests 50 things, I think it said on the box. Um, so you get the vials, you get the little envelopes, put them in, and you get all your labels, and you put them back in the same box that you buy and you stick the label on the box and that's the post is done um, and then it goes to TMC which I guess is the one in London, is it Chorleywood I think it is um, and then they gather up enough samples and then they ship them all over to the States um, and I don't know where in the States they're tested. My head is saying Atlanta but I've got no idea why <laughs> but anyway and then you download an app on your phone and when I look at the moment it just says awaiting results. So I guess at some point this week I will get my results come through in that app. Um, so it's not quick, certainly not as quick as uh, Zelements, but it's just an MS and I just wanted to see what the difference was. To be 
quite brutally honest, I very rarely act on anything I get in my ICP test in the trace element area. If there's pollutants, obviously, or some of the macro elements are out, um, I might take action. But nine times out of ten, I just look at it and go, yeah, my traces always come back low. My last week elements, you know, it said 12 of my traces are low. So you get 16 showing, four okay, 12 are low, and I didn't do anything basically. So um, unless my tank starts to look rough, I might look into it further. But I dose trace elements anyway, as I said, already said many a time. I dose the A and the K, so I know there's traces going in there. I'm doing continuous water changes as well, so that's going in there. So there are traces in the tank. So, and you know, all the gone is and everything looked fine. So, other than the uh, other than the frag who doesn't like the polar water going in, um, everything else is good. Uh, yeah, so that's it. So I'm dosing the magnesium, pulling back on the sodium hydroxide, hydroxide, yeah, hydroxide. Um, and what else I've done? Oh yeah, so I helped a fellow reaper out by storing lots of his reaping equipment because he's. He's in a transition phase or, you know, going from one place to another and he's not sure when he's going to be able to set up a tank again. So I've got a shed at my end of my garden. I think it's like eight, ten foot by, ten foot by six foot, eight foot, I don't know. Anyway, I bought it just to stash all the overflow rubbish that you get when you buy, you know, it's like all the boxes for the lights and everything like that, you just store. Um, so I cleared some space. So the good thing is I found a Versa pump while I was sorting all the stuff out and restacking it. Um, so it's, I've put it on the um, Mobius and I've updated the firmware. Seems to work okay. I think this is one that I couldn't calibrate before. Um, so I need to buy a new peristaltic tube for it. Um, and I need to get the, this is the first generation Versa. So they subsequently added a like a little inset plastic retaining ring in there. I guess it squeezes the tube a bit harder because basically it's de decreasing the um, diameter of that kind of circle where the rollers go around. So I can't imagine why else they would have done it, but, or maybe the tube was slipping off. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, I've got one. And, well, I'm going to get one for uh, I think they're three ninety nine. So I will hook that up, and the reason I'm going to hook it up is because part of the gear that the guy brought, I mean, he bought tons of stuff to be honest, he bought a whole Red Sea 170 tank and cabinet, brand new, never been used. Um, he bought like five litre, not really nice cylindrical dosing containers. He bought about five other glass tanks. He bought a, a calc reactor, Tons of just pumps and temperature controllers and test kits and you know all the paraphernalia that you just collect over time. But the other thing he bought was this, which I'm quite interested to get going. This is a Coraline Bio Nitriator. Uh, also S1501. So that's for a thousand litre tank. So it's far too small, really, to be the total. Thing that controls my nightshades but i've looked at these before i think i've looked at the D, D ones and if memory serves me right you have to feed them with either some proprietary solution that dnd make or i've got vodka in my head but i could be wrong um, but anyway so but this one doesn't so i read the instructions for this and you just basically feed it the salt water from your tank um and then you get the effluent at a drip rate or a constant rate which is eventually slow enough that it takes all the nitrates out of the water so basically it's anaerobic bacteria and they feed the yellow stuff is the sulfur beads um yeah so i thought yeah interested to try it it's only a thousand it's for a thousand litre tank so um even if it's super efficient it shouldn't strip all of my nitrates out um, but yeah, I thought I like it. I might get a bigger one or I might just leave that one to I get on. Um, I can't use it at the moment because it comes with a Eheim, that's a 1048 pump. 
Um, I managed to get the front off. It was really, I had to get a monkey wrench on it to get that off. Um, and then if you look there, you can see how rusted that impeller is. So that's why I couldn't get it off. I think it was like stuck to the body of the pump. So I've citric acid, just a weak solution of citric acid in that center and it looks good. So I'm hoping I can just buy a new impeller, which are about, I don't know, 25 quid or something. And I can get that fixed up and on there and get that running. And then I will, apparently you can, you can use it without um, a feed pump. You can just use it by gravity, I think, I guess. Um, but I'm gonna, I'll probably hook it up to the Versa, to be honest, I've got a bit more fine control of it. Uh, so I will get that set up at some point. But I'm thinking I go, I go away, I think in just over three weeks, I'm gonna try and go away again. So this is my, um, this has been my third attempt to get away this year. I was meant to go to Italy, that got called off because my wife had an operation on the knee. I was meant to go to Sulawesi, volcano erupted, that got put off. So now I'm meant to go to the Maldives. So until I'm sitting on the beach, actually there, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go, yeah, I'm not going. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I'm quite interested to get that going, actually. It's a new bit of kit for me. I like, I like kit. So I will try that and see how it works out. Um, the other thing I've done is I bought arrows, so arrows. So the reason I bought the arrows is um, I was just going through my pipe work the other day for when I get the other tank in and when I change the sump round, and it just occurred to me that I have to mentally trace the pipes back. So obviously down in my sump room there's a lot of pipes um, going in many different directions, and I was just and I have to trace them back, go, right, where does that one go? Where does this one come from? Um, I've got some pipes that come from the outside of the fish room where the salt is mixed that come in, you know, the others that go back to the sun. So I just thought, I'm going to make my life a little bit easier and just, at the very least, put the direction of flow on them so I know which way the water's going. Um, I guess I could get more creative and actually label, like, the drains and the returns and fresh salt water and whatever. For now, I'll just, I think I'll just do arrows. Um, I think that is about it. Yeah. Oh, so the other thing actually, so when he turned up with all his fish gear, so um, <clears throat> I, I broke my hydrometer. <clears throat> I smashed it all over the floor. Uh, so last Friday when I bought a new one, 42 pounds, and when he turned up, all this fish, well he didn't turn up, we went and got it in a van on Saturday and we brought it back, we were unpacking it, and he, he got three hydrometers, and he's only good to you, Rob, do you, do you use these? I was like, I've literally just bought one, so handy to know that I've got some spares anyway, because no doubt I will break that one at some point, because they're great, but obviously they're very fragile. Um, so I cannot think of anything else. I'm still dosing my lanthium into my skimmer. Uh, that seems to be going very well. Get a little bit of res like, um, residue on the end of the, the tube, but I think the skimmer itself probably buffets it enough to keep it reasonably clean. Um, our phosphates are at point two so they've come down because they did get up to 0.26 i'm dosing 18 mils on a continuous dose so over 24 hours so it's going in really slowly um it's pulling out some very rich gunk as well so i'm hoping that none of that lamp film is making it into display and that's part of the reason why i sent the um icp off could it obviously it tests for lanthium so it will tell me uh, yeah, I think that's it really. Um, I bought a net as well. So this is, I don't know why I'm showing you a net because I'm pretty sure you'll know what a net looks like. It's quite a big net. So this is the first stage of getting that convict tank out of the tank. So the fish trap don't work for him because he's too, he's too low down the pecking order that all the big tanks don't, they don't let him in it. Um, 
so it's not really working so i'm going to try and do a, either a, either do a snatch and grab when he's busy tormenting the yellow tang who's not actually stuck in the corner at the moment um or i might come in at night when he's sleeping somewhere and see if i can get him there so yeah i mean it's just he's just down that end of the tank chasing the other tanks now so yeah he is a he's a very a very he's my oldest fish he's, the, he's you know i don't know how old I'm, i don't know how long i've had him but it's seven years or something like that so anyway yeah so slowly but surely i will get around to getting him out at some point so yeah everything else is fine um oh, i did have a slight issue with my what is that it is a gold hammer so down at end i've got two hammers i've got a big toxic green one which i've had for years um and i can't remember how many months ago i bought a gold hammer for my ac six months ago maybe longer now um they, they're kind of they're down at that end because they're they're placed between i've got two mc M, mp60s on the bottom of the tank which shoot front and back low and they sit in between them so they don't get too much current but i don't know what fish it is but one fish because <laughs> then they're on a flat base but they're not stuck to the floor and one fish i think it's the leonardi rash if i'm honest because he likes to get under and try and get to the little um shrimps that live under there and at some point he punted it in front of the mp60 and it's come down the tank fallen over and gone head first into the echinata which sits under there that thing is lethal um i mean it killed my uh raja rampage frag that also got blown into it and now the, one of the heads of the gold hammer is just absolutely gone melted um so i've tucked it even further away now but i guess if he keeps doing it i'm gonna have to super glue it to the bottom of the tank i suppose but I don't really like doing it if I don't have to, but fish come first. All right. I'll get rid of the coral before I get rid of the fish. Especially her, because she's an absolute beaut. But yeah. Um so I think I think that's about it for this week. Oh yeah, so this weekend obviously if you are in the UK, it is um Love to Reef is on up where AAC is situated in Harlow, Essex. So I am sure some people watch this will be going. So please feel free to come up and say hello. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be good. Got a couple of good talkers, uh, Jamie Craigs and Jeremy Gay from Reef Builders. Um, I'm sure they both give very interesting talks. So yeah, looking forward to it. So I don't think I've got anything else to say. So I will see you in the next one.